Again, welcome to Database Management System course. This lecture is covered data modeling. So our main objective is to discuss data modeling and why data models are important. Also, we are going to describe the basic data modeling building blocks. Also, we are going to define what business rules are and how they influence database design. Also, we are going to understand how the data or the major data models involved. So what is a data modeling? The data modeling is a process of creating a specific data model for a determined problem domain. So for example, we want to create a system to manage patients in an hospital. Now in order to create this system, first we are not going to implement it or develop it straightforward we may try to design the system, especially if it's a very complex and bigger system. So in this process, we can create a modeling that can represent the system. So a data model is just a simple representation of complex real world data structures. And it's very useful for supporting a specific problem domain. Now a model is an abstraction of a complex real world objects or events. So what are the importance of data models? Here yeah, we say an importance, the importance of a data model cannot be overstated, but again, it facilitates communications. A model again is a design system, system that is being designed. So during the design process, again, there may be a communications among the project team members and also the stakeholders. So it facilitates communication. An example is if we decided to create a system or implement a system and there's a fault, it's very expensive again to resolve the problem. But during the modeling or the design phase, again, it doesn't cost much if there's any uh, wrong or an error, it's more, much less cost to implement or to correct the errors. So it also gives various views of the database and also it organizes data for various users. And also again, it provides an abstraction for the creation of a good databases. Again, this course is focusing on database system, but again, modeling can be in a software engineering, any system that again, we want to implement. So a data model basic building blocks in terms of a database, again, this is a database course. First, we have an entity. An entity can be a person, place, team, or event about which data can be collected and stored. Now, we also have attributes, which will be the characteristics of an entity. So for example, we may have an entity as a person. One of the characteristics or the attributes of a person can be his last name, his address, phone number, etc. Then also, since we are going to have more than one entity, we may have a relationship. A relationship normally is association and more entities. In a database system, we have three types of relationship, which would be one to many, or many to many, or one to one. We will discuss about this more details when we cover this topic. And also the model can have what we call the constraints. A constraint can be a restriction placed on a data this will ensure data integrity, also data security, uh, privacy, et cetera. Next, we talk about business rules. A business rule normally will be the brief and also precise description of a policy, procedure, or a principles. So for example, in our school, we may have a business rule that a student cannot take more than one class because the semester ends in four weeks instead of 16 weeks or 15. In other schools, they may have a session where it ends in 16 weeks and they can take up to four classes. So in this case, if a school said a student cannot take more than one class, the relationship between a student and a class will be one-to-one. -one. As we can see, one-to-one, -one, which means one student can take one class. A class will be an entity because we can store data about a class for example, who's teaching the class, the class code, the textbook for the class, etc. Then a person or a student, we may have his attributes also. 
So you can see from business rule, we can come up with a modeling. So business rule normally, as we said, can be generated from the business policies or the company policies, procedure, et cetera. And here we say we can also create and enforce, enforce actions within that organization environment. Also, we will be able to establish entities, relationships, and constraints, as we said earlier. Through business rule, we can come up with our modeling. We can establish entities. What's, what are the relationship between the entities? And also, if there's any constraints. Next is how do we discover business rule? Uh, sources of business rule can be the company managers. Uh, they have implemented the policies. So policy makers, the department managers of the organization, or if there's a written documentation procedures of the company business operations, and also direct interviews with the end users. Now, reasons for identifying and documenting business rule. Yeah, we say that it will standardize the company's view of data, very important. Uh, the data system, everything will be consistent, standardized. And also it facilitates communications too between the users and also the designers. It also assists designers to understand the nature, the role, the scope of data and business processes also develop appropriate relationship participation rules and also the constraints and create an accurate data model. So we can see that discovering business rule is very important. Actually from business rules, we can come up with the implementation of the database system. From the business rule, we design the modeling and implementation. Now we should know also there's a translating business rules into data model components. So we need to translate this business rule again into a data model component. As we said earlier, from the business rule, we can identify our entities. Normally the entities will be now, and now for example, student, uh, employee, or a product, these are now. Then normally the rules, the rules will be verbs. For example, a student take, Two classes, take is a third, student is now, crisis is now. So here we say business rules set the stage for the proper identification of entities. So attributes, relationships, and constraints. If we know entities, the attributes and the relationship, we can create a data modeling system. So here we say the nouns again translate into entities and also the verbs translate into relationship among entities. The relationships are always bi-directional. One student take one class or class can be taken by one student. Very rare that we may have a relationship that which is unidirectional. So questions to identify the relationship type here, we say how many instances of B are related to one instance of A? or how many instance of A are related to one instance of B. So we can see the relationships are again by directional yeah, B to A or A to B. Now the naming convention for a model, data model is very important. So we may have the entity name requirement. For example, a student, we should have the name student or employee. And also this entity name should be descriptive of the object. So if they are students, we can name the entity as a student. If it's a general uh, course, we can name it as a course, etc. So we should be very descriptive of the object in the business environment. Also, we should use terminology that is familiar to the users. Attribute names normally will require to be descriptive of data represented by attributes. So a student, an attribute of a student can be his last name, uh, first name, uh, etc. Also the proper naming, we should, should facilitate communication between parties. And also it's going to promote self-documentation. We also have what we call the higher ranking and network models. So normally in the higher ranking models, it's developed to manage large amount of data for compressed manufacturing projects. This can be represented by an upside down tree, which contains segments. 
or the segments, again, are the equivalent of a file system record type. And we may discuss this in more detail. Also, it shows a set of one-to-many relationships. Then a network model normally is created to represent a complex data relationship effectively. This will improve database performance and also impose a database standard. And also it allows a record to have more than one parent. Now we have a standardized database concept that image with a network model are still being used by modern data models. So we have a schema and soft schema. We also have the data manipulation language, data definition language. We will go more detail on this when we cover the, the sequential query language, uh, SQL. Uh, we have the data manipulation language. Normally data manipulation language will be the queries, et cetera, to manipulate the data. Then data definition language will be the commands that we are going to use to create the database and also database objects, et cetera. So again, we will go more detail on this topic in the future lectures. So we have what we call the relational model. Relational model, actually the term relation means a table. And the table normally consists of columns and also rows. So here we say produce an automatic transmission database that replaces the standard transmission database. This will be based on relation that is a table. So a relational model is based on table. And it will be a form of matrix composed of intersecting topics, the rows and also attributes, the column. In database, the term topos means records, uh, which also means a row. So if you store data in a table, one row, for example, we store student data. So one row of uh, information will be represent one student record. Second row will represent the second student record, etc. Attribute will be the column name, for example, last name, first name of the student, etc. Also, it describes a precise set of data manipulation constructs. Now, with relational database management system, which is the modern and the most used database system, relational database system, for example, we have Oracle, Microsoft, Access, etc. It normally performs the basic function provided by the higher ranking and also network database management system. Also, it makes the relation, relational data model easier to understand and implement. Also, it hides the complexity of the relational model from user. So this example of a relational model here is made from a Microsoft Access. So here we have two entities. One is agent, the other is customer. And we can see that there's a relationship between the two entities, agent and customer. We can see that in agent, we have one. In the customer, we have infinity symbol. This means one to many relationship. So we can say one agent can have many customers. So this is one to many relationship. Now, with the, as we said earlier, the SQL, we may go that more detail. This is the special language, or I would say the script language that is used mostly in relational database system, either to create the database objects or any type of object, or to manipulate uh, the data. So we have the end user interface, which allow end user to interact with the data. And also we have the collection of tables stored in the database. Now each table is independent from another. So we have, let's say, two tables, one for student, only student information, one for course, only course information. Now the rows in different tables are related based on common values in common attributes. We also have the SQL engine, which normally executes all the queries, execute all the queries. So that would be the conclusion of this lecture. Again, this lecture is uh, part one of chapter two. And this lecture is again cover chapter two, which again cover data modeling system. So again, thank you for your time.